Where do you get your inspiration from to keep pushing the envelope and keep giving us the... Well, as far as angry music is concerned, from the situation on this tour, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect inspiration for the next album to make it more Hellhammer. -like. And, and uh, for the rest of it, uh, uh, the inspiration is simply for my life. Okay. Where, where else should it be from? Okay. A lot of your peers along the way have... The best description I could give it is, I've lost their edge, things have softened, they've softened up, they've become, they've become static, whereas yourself has went further and further down the line. And, always giving us something new and always giving them, it's when you hear a new record from Triptychon or whether it was from Celtic Frost or whatever it wasn't, you sit and sit down and go, oh, Oxbury Instance, always, you always have to work with the records to really get, mm -hmm. get your head around it. Uh, is that a fair? You tell me, I, 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 I cannot possibly rate my own albums and my own output, but, uh, that would be totally preposterous. In, ter in terms of what you're doing, do you feel that you're, you've, you've taken away from your peers, you've just went a totally different direction, you haven't followed a well tread path? It's, uh, it's not such a rigid concept, uh, I simply do what's inside of me at the, at the given time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm extremely happy with the last three albums I've been off with, the last Celtic Frost albums, uh, album and the, the first two Triptychon albums. I'm very happy with, with that path, it's, it's the music I feel at home in. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, it's not that we sit down and, and design the album, it simply, as I said earlier, it, it simply reflects uh, my life at a given time, the, the way I write my songs. And um, I was perhaps lucky, in quotation marks, that I've made my, my, my major mistake early on in my career. In the Celtic Frost days, I released an album that can only be described as an abomination. Which, which really was a wake-up call and it has completely changed my, my outlook on, on my own work. I've become a, a much more strict producer. I, I've implied much, much higher quality standards to anything I release. So maybe while others release their great mistakes later on in their life, I, I uh, in quotation marks, was lucky enough to do it early on and learn from that. Uh -huh. um, and, and the third thing is, when I, when I was a teenager, many, many of the hard rock bands I listened to at the time became softer and more commercial as they got older. And I found an extremely disappointing development. Mm -hmm. I liked their early crunchy material and then they all turned commercial. And, and I, always, I always wanted to be different. I didn't want to turn commercial. And I, you know, this is the music I love and I didn't want to water mm -hmm. it down. Coming to the new album, um, it was a, it's a very natural continuation from the previous record, I, th I think, anyway. And, uh, but even with more... Uh, experimentation it with uh, one of the real things that really hits you up the face is that on the opening track is there's like an eastern feel sort of guitar solo in there. Mm -hmm. Is it was is that something coming from an outside influence or was that just a? Um, I think you're referring to the the intro of um, Altar of Deceit. I think. Uh, uh, no, it was a trace of suffocation of souls. Oh was, yeah, yeah, it's sort of. No, these these things simply happen. I I tend to. Trust my my instincts, my gut feelings, and when I sit at home, writing these songs, I I, I instinctively, or I hope at least, I instinctively know if there's still something missing. It if if I ignore that, then it, it, it I have no peace, you know. I so so a song to me is not finished until all the pieces fit together. It doesn't. Really, I I don't sit down thinking I need to do an eastern or a far east intro or anything like that. It's simply. I sit on the guitar, and if I think something's missing, then I'm, I'm working on it till it, it satisfies satisfy my gut, gut instinct, which was honed by, by uh, 51 years of, of a passion for hard music. Mm -hmm. The new album has it retains the dark bludgeon from the first LP, but it also has a lot more uh, experimentation on it this time as well. And is that a, is that a path you're going to? Continue on. It's, you're going to keep building, building on that, or is, is it fact that it's just what happens at the time, how you're feeling at the time? Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I have my I have my um, my promise with the new album. I uh, I think the next one should be a little more straightforward. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that there's not nothing uh, unusual on there, or, and, and also when it's really dark. But I I don't know. I think. Right now, the, the, the second album is, is as far as I want to stretch it, mm -hmm. uh, influence-wise. Mm -hmm. And I, I would very much like to, to have a, a, an album, the next album, to be a little more straightforward, a little, a little darker.
a little, a slightly more hellhammerish. Your records are always very complete. Would you ever give, give consideration consideration to go out and do one of the one of the albums in complete live, start to finish? Would it be possible even? Sure, we've we've talked about that. Um, yeah, why not? Um, that wouldn't. The thing is, the difficulty is, I, I almost every album I've ever done. There's songs on there that are very difficult to do in the live setting, yeah. unless unless you you want to bring in orchestra or whatever yeah. studio musicians. There's always the the odd track on there that it's very elaborate, so it's not it's not as easy as if if Metallica are doing their first album. Um, but we, we have talked about it. And it might happen one of these days. But as as it is right now, I really like to play a cross section of the entire path of them. I, 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 um, when we are a headliner and we're not restricted to 45 minutes like tonight, I like to play from Hellhammer to Triptychon. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much music that means something to me that, that I'm very happy right now with it. Is there anything left in the vaults from previous bands, that, like uh, demos, live shows, things like that? No, when we when we did the reissues, which is already also an ancient ancient history, when we did the re Celtic Frost reissues in the year 2000, mm -hmm. we, we added all the bonus tracks of yeah. all the, the, the unreleased tracks, so everything's released. Um, there's a lot of unfinished material, especially from the monotheist era. There's there's hours of of unfinished songs. Mm -hmm. I've I've used some of those um, for Trypticon, but there's there's still there's hours and there's also some lost tapes that uh, Celtic Frost's final drummer um, took upon himself to take with him. I have no idea if they even still exist, which is a shame. There's a yeah. lot of good stuff on there that I wrote, but things are as they are, and, and so far, um, I you know. I don't always, always want to dig in the in, in, in the, the, the trash of older albums. Ah. I'm still alive, and I, I, I hope I can still write a new song too. Yeah. You know? so, speaking of different people, fans and whatnot, there's going to be great to see some kind of real retrospective box set with everything in it, maybe with some extras. And... Well, one could presumably do a box set with, with all the stuff I've done, but but um, I haven't really given that much thought. As I said, the 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 Celtic Frost reissues in 2000, they were really important to me. Yeah. Because in the old days, the record company meddled with, with us and, and uh, destroyed a lot of, 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 of our good intentions. So um, we were very happy to finally take control in 2000 and, and do it the right way. Yeah. Uh, once that has been done, um, you know, we, as I said, I also like to look forward. Looking forward to them with uh, it was the unfortunate and timely death of H.R. Geiger this year mm -hmm. and the artwork, got a history of artwork with him. Does that, does that signal the end of there will be a change in the, the look of the package in the next time round? Or? We, we wanted to implement the change after the first album. Um, already in Celtic Frost we, 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 we didn't want to come, uh, become the typecast band that can only work with gear and everything else is, is inferior. Mm -hmm. That's why in Celtic Frost we never went back to him to ask for another cover. We wanted to have one cover and then go different directions, even though, of course, we totally admired him. And I was going to do the very same thing with, with Triptychon. After he did the first album with us, I was extremely proud and happy, but that was going to be it. I didn't want to be ungrateful and, and go back greedily and ask for more and more and more. As it happens, uh, then he approached me a year later and, and, and he proposed that we work together because he was so happy with the way we, we used his work. And uh, we were, of course, stunned. We had already contacted another artist. We had already designed the second trip to the album without a different artwork. But uh, there was no way we were going to turn down Giger. So what, what we decided was uh, to do a triptych together with Giger, to do three triptych on albums with him. Mm -hmm. we've, we've released two of those, but I'm very happy to say before his death, we, we still designed the third one. And um, I will, of course, not do anything without the, the consent of his widow, mm -hmm. but uh, it looks like the next uh, Triptychon album will be uh, with a Giga cover, and it will be the very last cover Giga ever officially co-created. Wow. Do you have a hand in the, uh, what, what goes out to the fans, when, what, the, what the packaging looks like? It's just that the, the, last, the last couple of albums have been very, very impressive with the posters and the heavyweight vinyl and the big sleeves and all that uh... Every single detail is, is, is uh, decided by us. This is why we formed our own record company. Mm. Central Media are not our record company, they're our p licensing partner. Mm. I decide every single detail, and uh, the work on this, this new album uh, took months. I'm happy to say, though, that Central Media have been a, an extremely understanding and, and, and constructive partner. Um, it's sometimes not easy for them to deal with me and my, my ideas, but uh, I have to say um, our partners at Central Media have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
I think they realize that, that this partnership is worth it because uh, the, the end product is something special. And so I, I have absolutely no complaints. But the fact is, yes, we control everything ourselves, yeah. which, which uh, is one of the lessons you take uh, from uh, having been a band in the 80s when record companies destroyed everything you wanted to do as, as, as opposed to helping them. On this tour, um, you're on this lineup with At The Gates, um, who have come back with a record which can only be described as safe. Was it Triptychon's choice to come on this package, or is this, is this company politics in the background? Again? No, no, uh, we, we, we received this offer. And that, at the time, I personally wasn't even aware that they were on Essential Media. Mm -hmm. um, we received this offer and we discussed it, and in the truceless tradition, we, we uh, took a democratic vote in the band. I'm not, you know, I formed this band, but I'm not the band dictator. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be a band, so we, we always vote on everything. And uh, I was the only one to vote against this tour, and it was outvoted. So here I am. And as it turns out, my, uh, my opinion was the right one, but we are here, and uh, we will continue this tour as good as we can. When you're going, to, when you're going out as headliners and whatnot, uh, you played at Roadburn a few years ago and you curated the, curated the day and whatnot. Would, when you're going out as headliners, would you consider taking out lineups like really, really diverse lineups, or would you? Of course, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Is, is there anything stopping you at this point doing that? Yeah, this tour. <laughs> as it happens, we we sell very well. I probably shouldn't go into more details, yeah. but uh, we sell very well while uh, versus uh, at the gates, and um, our promoter and our agent have said we should we should do a headline tour. I would like to be on a headline tour right now of Tripticon and have more playing time and more freedom and more stage props. But uh, as I said, we, we've decided as a band to be in this tour. That's what we're doing now. But we definitely uh, are looking at the headline tour for 2015. And uh, then we hopefully also have our say in what bands we want to take on the road. And of course, I will be very open. I mean, if you look at my influences ever since the Celtic Frost days, they've, they've ranged from jazz to classical to new wave. Mm -hmm. To all kinds of things, so so you know I, I'm very open-minded. If 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 a, if a tour lineup creates a certain vibe, a certain aura, a certain mm -hmm. feeling, then it's fine with me. It doesn't have to be all straight metal. Yeah, yeah. As I said, seen like bands like Neurosis always take out sort of really sort of diverse mm -hmm. lineups. Of course, I mean, there's so many good bands around. Mm -hmm. If you could make a really exciting tour, it's of course there's also the the factor of logistics and and does this band have, is this band right now ready to tour or in the studio? You know. Yeah. It's, it's always difficult to assemble a good tour, but I'm, I'm basically very open. How long do you see this tour and cycle lasting for this album? Well, uh, in my opinion, um, it's basically over because uh, I'm, I'm looking at the next album, I'm working on the next mm -hmm. album, but, but um, we haven't really decided whether to do our own tour before or after the next album. That's, that's really still up in the air. We've talked about this actually on this tour. And we kind of undecided because we don't we don't want to put the deadline on 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 the work for the next album. Mm -hmm. We want to hand over the next album when it's finished. Yeah. So we're going to leave the record company completely in the dark. <laughs> and just one day, I'll stand there and say, "This is our next album." Mm -hmm. and, and until we we, we, we we can estimate when the album's finished, it's very difficult to say whether. But of course, there's there's one the, the next big one in the UK will be will be back for the uh, Temples Festival, yeah, uh, which I'm looking forward to immensely. Right, That's why we were very happy to get that offer. Mm. That's all all the questions I have, and I'd just to take a chance to thank you very much for taking the time the time out. To it's me who has to thank you for giving us this platform.